An attorney representing several web shop operators has a message for the commissioner of police. If he acts, then of course we will catch it on the CCTV cameras that are in these institutions. We'll the second traffic fatality victim on Eleuthera in two weeks identified. A major investment in education technology on the way. Which will bring our schools into the 21st century. Plus the national beach soccer team hoping to make history. It looks pretty good for us. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Everyone, thanks for joining us this Sunday for NB12 Weekend. Following Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade's warning to web shop gamblers and operators to obey the law and stop gambling as police can turn up at any time to make arrests, the attorney representing most of the web shop bosses gave a warning of his own. Wayne Monroe, who represents six web shop operators, says his clients have no issue with Greenslade's comments or police conducting investigations to determine whether illegal activity is taking place in any of the establishments. The police have the ability to come into this office to investigate. So nobody is saying they shouldn't do that job. Um, they will take advice, they will determine what they will do. I don't intend to try to tell the Commissioner of Police how to do his job. But Monroe warns police to carry out their duties carefully and in accordance with the law. He says in the event officers cross the line, web shop operators are prepared to use any evidence against them in court. My position is this, we have to be prepared for what happens. The police will do what the police will do. And once they've done it, as I say, most of these establishments have CCTV cameras. It'll be caught on camera. No doubt in this age of, of technology, it will be recorded on people's cell phone, video recorders and cameras and voice things. So if police are belligerent and don't do their duty or act bizarrely, then it will be captured. The fate of web shops remains uncertain as a legal challenge remains tied up in the courts of appeal. Monroe represents Percy's Web Cafe, Island Luck, FML Group of Companies, ASU Draw, Whatfall and Chances. The attorney said previously that if police interfere with the businesses he represents while the matter is still before the court of appeal, they will take action against the Royal Bahamas Police Force for damage. As Justice of Appeal John put to me, and I couldn't answer it in the negative, if indeed something happens that we say is improper, there's a remedy for us. That was the question he put, and yes, there is a remedy for us. Whether it will be adequate or not is a different issue. Um, but as it were, to do something while issues are before the court is a gamble. When you gamble, some games of chances are improved by the use exercise of skill, but fundamentally they're games of chances. And while you're in litigation, it's, it's a gamble. There have been no reports of arrests weeks after Chief Justice Sir Michael Barnett discharged the conservatory order, which prevented police from shutting down web shops. Lawyers representing a group of web shop bosses secured the order on January 30th, the morning after Prime Minister Perry Christie ordered that web shop gaming cease. Two weeks ago, the Court of Appeal rejected an application to stay the ruling. This just into our newsroom. Reports of a murder on Halifax Street in the area of St. Vincent Road. Our news team is on the scene at this moment. We're told that a man was fatally shot just moments ago and investigators are processing the scene. This latest homicide marks the 35th so far this year. Tune into NB12 tomorrow night for full details on this shooting. The hunt for a man wanted in connection with a drug trafficking investigation came to an end yesterday after police arrested 33-year-old Conrad Campbell. Police wanted to question him in connection with a large quantity of cocaine found at Lyndon Pindling International Airport on Friday, April 19th. Former policewoman 27-year-old Tori Sweeting and her brother 33-year-old Delano Sweeting were charged for that incident last week. Police say they conspired to smuggle three pounds of cocaine worth $64,000 into Miami, Florida. 
According to reports, Drug Enforcement Unit officers arrested Campbell off of Cowpen Road around 5 yesterday evening, just four days after police issued a wanted bulletin for the suspect. The 25-year-old man who was killed when the truck he was riding in crashed into a cedar tree in Eleuthera has been identified by friends as Orban Etienne. We're told that he was a foreman at Pinder's Door and Hardware Construction. Eyewitnesses tell our news team that the Burgundy Ford F-150 truck was so badly mangled that Etienne's lifeless body had to be carefully cut out of the wreckage using the jaws of life. According to reports, Etienne was in the passenger seat of the truck that was traveling south on Queens Highway when the driver reportedly lost control and slammed into the tree. An eyewitness said the truck overtook another car at high speed before swerving out of control. Police say the accident happened around 6 p.m. The driver is currently being treated for serious injuries in hospital here in New Providence. He was airlifted shortly after the incident. Traffic police are on the island once again investigating this second tragic accident in two weeks. On Friday, April 19th, a 48-year-old man was killed instantly after his Chevy Lumina collided with a GM truck in Palmetto Point. Over an Exuma Thursday evening, two Canadians who owned a home on the island were struck by a vehicle and killed. Police once again urge all motorists throughout the Bahamas to drive carefully and adhere to all traffic laws. Well, here's some good news for the island of Eleuthera. Hundreds of Eleutherans have recently been employed by several major developments on that island. Prime Minister Perry Christie and several government officials toured the developments on Eleuthera and Harbour Island last week and said the island's economic recovery is encouraging. Celeste Nixon has the details. From Governor's Harbour to Harbour Island, the Prime Minister got a first-hand look at Eleutherans' hard work at several resort developments. Eleuthera really needed some kind of catalytic development, something to make things happen and cause other people to see things happening. And the Prime Minister's first stop was Governor's Harbour to see the progress of Phase 1 of the French Leave Resort. The $11 million development currently employs 70 Bahamians. The project is only 25% complete, with workers currently doing underground installation for utilities. But the project manager, Jason Thompson, said once complete, the five-star boutique will employ even more Bahamians. The 16 um, hotel college is going to keep the Bahamian authenticity. And then it's also comprised of a commercial hotel area, which is going to have the uh, reception area. Also, it's going to have a tiki pavilion, wedding pavilion. There's going to be an events lawn, a large commercial swimming pool and then a restaurant and also a tiki bar and grill. And then ministers were off to Coco de Mamas to see the progress there. Last year, the resort announced a $15 million expansion and an increase in employees once the expansion is complete in January 2014. Next up was the Cove in the heart of Gregory Town, which opened just last month, creating more than 100 jobs. The resort also trains local employees. Owner Sidney Torres, said business is booming. We have been sold out uh, from the first day we opened. We had some weeks and weekends in between where we were at 50% occupancy, 60% occupancy. Um, the Easter weekend, we were sold out for the whole week. Um, we have the end of April is really solid. We're about 85% sold out on 68 rooms. So um, it's to me, it's a, it's, it's a su success. The delegation then hopped over to Harbor Island to check out the expansion of Dunmore Hotel. Manager Amar Stubbs said the resort maintains 75% occupancy. Project manager Tim Bray Fogel said locals are working on three new residences at the resort. We currently have about 70 employees on site construction of the various residences and that will probably peak at about 100 and drop off again as the last few residences are, are in a construction. MP for Central and South Eleuthera, Damian Gomez, said the developments came at the time when many Eleutherans were struggling to make ends meet. Minister of State for Investment, Kalis Roll, who was also on tour, says the government will use Eleuthera as a model to encourage investments and economic growth throughout the Family Islands. Reporting for MB12, I'm Celeste Nixon.